I am Kia Jarman, co-chair of Give Black, Give Back, an initiative in collaboration with the Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee. We come together on this platform to share about the 11 billion dollar annual treasure given by black households. We also celebrate and memorialize the time, talent, truth, and testimony that is often overlooked. Give Black Give Back's mission is threefold. We serve as a resource and amplifier of the black led funds at the community foundation. We also support the efforts of nonprofits that are run by and serve the black community and we provide access and education to the community on how to build or sustain their philanthropy in the community. This is a special edition of our Give Black, Give Back conversations where we honor a change maker in our community. I was reading a report recently, More Than Simply Doing Good by the University of Evansville, and they define a change maker as someone who is motivated to act. It's not enough to just have the intention to do something good because intentions must be translated into action. Let me turn it over to my co-chair, Lisa Swift-Young, to introduce our change maker today. So welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to sort of share and uh, celebrating Robert Churchwell Jr. Um, I'm going to give you a quick bio of him. For those of you who don't know who he is, he was born and raised in Nashville. Uh, Robert Churchwell Jr. is a product of the Memphis Nashville Public Schools, and he earned his bachelor degree in music education from Tennessee State in 1975. He later went on to get a master's of science degree in educational administration and supervision K-12 from Tennessee State in 1987. Um, before he began teaching, Mr. Churchwell worked with the archives of mayor, uh, uh, manager of commerce in the Union Bank in Nashville, and he was hired by the Kroger Company as a manager trainee. In 1977, Mr. Churchwell began teaching at the Metropolitan Nashville school system and he served as a band director at White's Creek Comprehensive High School and was selected to be the band director and chairman of the music department. He was promoted to assistant principal of John Overton Comprehensive High School in 1991 and he is asked by the superintendent to design and implement a mentoring program for middle and high school African-American males. He was appointed the principal of Nashville School of Arts in 1997, and in 2011, he was named the principal of the McCann Alternative Learning. Mr. Churchwell has served on the boards for many organizations, including the Family and Children's Services and numerous honors and recognition. He has served on the Nashville a Symphony, a Parthenon Patrons, and the Tennessee Repertory Theater. He is also a member of Say Hubbard, United Methodist Church, and he, where he has served as a lay leader and co-chair of the church council. Mr. Churchwell also enjoys athletics, music, and reading. He has two sons, William Ross and Robert Benjamin. Welcome so much, Mr. Churchwell. How are wow. you today? <laughs> Did you know all of that about yourself? <laughs> oh, wait a minute here. Where, where is that coming from? <laughs> He's like, who? Who is that? Who is that? Yeah, who, that? Done, who, who, who that? Okay. Who that? Who that? <laughs> well, it, it is so interesting because, I, as a graduate of National School of the Arts, I'm always so glad to hear your name and the number. So, um, we're so glad to have you here. Anything else you want to share about your bio? Well, I, it's covered a lot of ground. Uh, uh, as was said on the end, uh, my church affiliation, C. Hubbard. United Methodist Church. I've been there all my life. Uh, and so uh, our, that is our family's church too, uh, located in South Nashville. If you, it's, I think it's next to Cameron, now Cameron uh, Lead uh, High School, Middle School now okay. uh, on First Avenue South. And uh, no, I, as you mentioned, uh, working in Metro schools, I was band director first at North High School. Mm. Uh, that was my first band director job. I was there for two years and worked with a lot of great young people and a lot of great parents too. And took some of them to White's Creek, uh, some of my kids to White's Creek. So I had a real good core of students and parents when we started the greatest, the greatest high school band in America, White's Creek Band of Distinction. All right. Wow. That's, that's all I'm going to ask. Okay. That's, that's, awesome. that's, that's so awesome. My dad went to North High. So uh, again, that Nashville piece is, is through and through who you are. Um, we're here to talk about all, a lot of things, but philanthropy being the heartbeat of what we talk about. 
when you think about your beginning, what is your origin story with philanthropy? When, when was the first time you remember uh, he either hearing the word philanthropy or knowing that you were giving in some way if you hadn't heard that word yet? When did that show up for you? Well, uh, uh, it really hit home uh, many, many years ago uh, when I was working on the family and uh, children's board. Uh, and also Ronald McDonald House, I served on that board too. So the the, the importance of uh, philanthropic giving and philanthropy was of course a core of those two organizations. And so I got to see firsthand the importance of giving uh, as my my mother and my, my uh, aunt Gladys, who's I would consider my second mother would always say, uh, for much is given, much is required. So you need to give back. So those two organizations were really my first introduction to the word philanthropy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's really interesting. You mentioned your family and your family is a very uh, renowned family in this particular area in, in Nashville and, and across the country for that matter. Um, just a little bit of what was a typical day like growing up as a church well um, in the household? What was that? What did that look like? Well, well, bless you for saying that. <laughs> we give God all the glory for whatever contributions we've been able to make to the, make to the city and society and whole. It was a loving uh, household, uh, a very supportive household. And uh, God and church were the center of our household. Uh, my mother was the first person who introduced me to prayer. And, you know, the prayer that she taught all of us was I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. So that, that was uh, the church and knowing how God can direct your life and influence your life was a, a core part of, of, our, of our family. My father, my dad, while the church was senior, was a Sunday school teacher uh, at our church. And my mother was involved with the ladies group at Sea Hubbard also. So we were all, all five of us me being the oldest and the others coming along after me were involved with the youth group at, at Sea Hubbard. But you know, it, it was one that, that encouraged us to follow our dreams. Uh, to, I was asked early when I was 10 years old, my mother asked me, I never forget one Sunday, uh, we had chores to do. And it was my time to clean up the kitchen. And so she came in the kitchen and asked me, what do you want to be? And I told us, well, mom, I love music. And I started playing the violin when I was in the first grade at Meg's, at that time, Meg's elementary and high school. I said, I want to be a band director because uh, I loved uh, the marching bands. I saw the great high school bands in Nashville, Cameron, under the uh, direction of uh, Mr. Leonard Morton, Morton Jr., senior, I'm sorry, Leonard Morton Sr., and the great Pearl High School band under the direction of Mr. Marcus Gunner. And so I said, I want, I want to do that. I, I want to have a band like that one day. So I said, I want to be a band. Then I told her I wanted to be uh, a, a principal. Then I said, I want to be president of a university. So God bless me two out of three. But my mother told me when I said I wanted to be a band, she said, that means you got to be a teacher. I said, okay, all right, now I'll, I'll be a teacher. So with that in mind, uh, being a teacher is a calling and it's, it's the God's calling too. And so I felt that was my calling to be a teacher. So, but our, our home was one of uh, humor. Uh, and we, we had a, a lot of fun there. It was one of learning. The emphasis on education was paramount. It was very important that you had to get a quality education. You had to be, you know, do well in school too. And they encouraged us to be involved in extracurricular activities. Of course, the band for me and uh, orchestra, violin, uh, Corona Strings under Bob Holmes, and the, the Megs at the time, the Megs of String Orchestra. And my brother Andre played trumpet in the band at Megs. And uh, uh, he is also involved in uh, theater too, as I was in the theater also. He did from the behind the scenes, the technical part. So, uh, and my, my sister and, uh, was in music to play the piano and mom and dad hit the home run with my, our twin brothers, Kevin and Keith. Uh, Keith uh, played the trumpet and Kevin played the clarinet. 
So, you know, music was a real core and the importance of arts, the arts was uh, emphasized in our family also, because they want us to have a round, you know, rounded uh, uh, idea about the world and how all these different things, such as art, music, et cetera, makes it all fit together. So, uh, and, and one of the things that we had to do in our chores, uh, we had to clean up every Saturday. You had, to, you had your uh, place of, of uh, work. And, but my father, in his way of, of sharing the arts, because he loved the arts. Uh, he, was a, he loved music, he loved art. Uh, he loved to draw too, and he he taught my brothers how to draw. I can draw a great great stick man for you now. If you want a good stick man? I can, I can hook you up. But uh, he uh, uh, he would play uh, Louis Armstrong, uh, Frank Sinatra, Tony Bennett. Uh, he would also play the classics of uh, Beethoven, uh, Mozart, Mendelssohn. Uh, he played show music, uh, showboat. Uh, uh, he would play Camelot music from Camelot from, uh, and, uh, and it was just, it was just fantastic. I mean, you cleaning, I had the bathrooms to clean. So I would be, I would be in there scrubbing away, but <laughs> sometimes my, the music would take my mind away from what I was doing. And, you know, he, that was his way of subliminally uh, sharing with us his love, but also became a part of our love too. So he was very supportive uh, home, uh, Discipline was was a part of that too because you had chores to do, you had work to do, you had homework to do, and it also taught us the importance of discipline because if you plan on being successful, you have to discipline yourself. You have to be able to work those things uh, that you've been assigned, and you also have to make sure that you complete your task. Because they always told us, what, whatever you begin, you have to end. You can't can't stop. So. You know, it was it was fan, fantastic uh, uh, household. Uh, 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 my dad would play uh, uh, tricks on us, and uh, we would get a kick out of that. I mean, you know, he under a lot of pressure uh, working for the Nashville Banner at the time. But when he came home, I mean, he was dad, and we never did really uh, until I got older understand the pressure that he uh, he encountered. Uh, during his time with the National Banner. So it was it was great. Uh, great uh, family. And uh, we try to continue that with my children. And, and as my brothers and sisters, they try to continue that same legacy with their children. Too. Yeah, in my brain, I was thinking about the church will five. I mean, I was thinking, where, where, where the, where's the band? Um, you know, where's the album that, that, that's supposed to come out of that experience with all that music and all that talent? Um, and you, you really answered one of the questions that, that I know was burning for Lisa and I, which was around, you have a background, your family of journalism and education and arts and music and um, medicine and all of those things and what was your family's success. But to some degree, you shared some of that, um, the church being the foundation. And so uh, speak a little bit more about your, your uh, relationship with church and how it really started your journey to knowing how to give and knowing how to be of service and support to other people. Well, again, I go back to that saying, for much is given, much is required. And, 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 and as Jesus said, you only ask for the 10%. You have to learn the importance of giving uh, because he has given us so much. Uh, the blessings that we have received, uh, to be able to wake up every day is a blessing. But to be able to uh, see the fruits of your labor and the efforts of that, it's important that we were taught a long time ago the importance of giving and paying our tithes and offerings in church. And so I've seen the, uh, the reward, if you might say, I've seen the blessing rather for doing that. And uh, we have, uh, again, made that a paramount uh, piece of our training with our children uh, because you, know, you, you need to make sure that you're, you're giving to help move forward uh, the works of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in our church setting. And as different ministries that we have, they need to be supported financially also. So uh, that was ingrained and uh, also to serve. You know, I served on many of the different uh, areas in the church, uh, trustee, uh, 
church council. Uh, I was lay leader of the church. Uh, I'm a, uh, I was, I served on the, uh, only thing I haven't served on, well, I've the finance. Wow, I think I've served on about everything in the church for that matter, uh, from, a, from a lay uh, person standpoint. So, yeah, very important. So you've extended your giving beyond just the church, you know, different organizations that you've been attached to. What was, how did that evolve into giving out of stewardship, you know, for the church, but how did that evolve into giving into the community? And, you know, because a lot of people, we, we, a lot of us are raised to give, you know, our little pennies in the, in the, in the missionary, you know, from that standpoint, but you, your family, you and your family have evolved beyond that. And so what was the impetus for your sort of going outside of the church to sort of give? Well, again, going back to my exposure with the Ronald McDonald House and also Family and Children's Services uh, and the other boards I've served on, but uh, the importance of, of giving to those organizations, but also uh, extending further than that uh, to now. Of course, our family has given and will continue to give to uh, the Community Foundation because there is a scholarship in the name of my, my mom and dad there at the Community Foundation. And also, uh, you know, we have a school that's named after my father, Robert Church for Museum Mag Elementary School. Our family has been really, really involved in supporting that school uh, financially to help our young people because that's our future. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, and I've, I've also given uh, to uh, Vanderbilt Children's Hospital, uh, but from, from me, but from a family standpoint, uh, the two largest entities would be the uh, Community Foundation and also uh, Robert Church for Museum Mag Elementary School. So, you know, I, I find it, it, it's gratifying, but also you see the, your investment. You see what you have given take fruit, you know, blossom as we see the different programs and how people are helped, uh, how people who were part of those organizations or the organization support help them to move forward in achieving their dreams uh, in this world. Yeah, you've mentioned something a few times, which I, I, I appreciate and love our, our greatest assets being our young people. Um, and so Lisa often says, I'm, I'm going to mess it up a little bit, but she says something about it's not just what we have done, but what we can leave for the next generation of people. Um, that's the real legacy that we have. Talk to us about how, how we support the next generation. How do we make sure that we leave them uh, in a great place when we all get out of here? So talk a little bit why that investment uh, education was so important to you and to your entire family. Well, for me, I'm an educator, of course. Uh, I, uh, and I've dedicated my life to the, uh, to the world of education. My sister's an educator too, my mother. Mom was a teacher in Metro school for over 30 years. And she was an outstanding teacher. I tell people my mother could teach a brick. And, and, and that brick would be the valedictorian of this class. Okay. Wow. So, um, <laughs> she, was, she was some kind of teacher. Uh, and I try to use some of the things that she shared with me in my uh, work with young people. Uh, it, it's not always easy because there are always challenges that we have to overcome in helping young people to see beyond today, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, for us, uh, of course, uh, it's for me rather, it's important that you, you, don't, you don't always have to function within your uh, comfort zone. Mm -hmm. You sometimes have to step out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. to help other people. Uh, I have gone to homes, visited parents in their homes, uh, I've done uh, what we call house calls, and to sit down with parents to, to share with them the greatness that their children possess, but how they as parents can help their children move forward to be greater, you see. Because oftentimes parents, you know, we see the children every day, but it's good to have someone to come in and tell you, hey, what you're doing is working. Mm. Continue to do what you're doing. And those things we need to tweak, we talk about that you know, in a positive way, not a negative way. So, you know, uh, I think that uh, with my brothers, uh, Andre and Kevin and Keith, their outreach has been to encourage 
younger people and minorities in, 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 in general to go into the, the medical, medical profession to become physicians and explain to them the rigors that is involved, quite a bit of rigor involved to become a, a physician and some of the sacrifices we have to, to make. So my sister works at Vanderbilt. She, is, she, she teaches the young ones, the little ones. And so uh, that's quite a challenge right there. But you know, it's important to, for me, and I'm sure for them too, to make a difference in someone's life if you can. Uh, and so, uh, you know, you going to NSA, uh, the art school. Uh, what was your What was your uh, uh, area? Were you in dance or? I was in music, so I was classically trained on voice and piano. Well, you got good. You know, who was your teacher? Uh, I had um, Michael Graham. Oh yeah. On oh, board, yeah. yeah. And so we we retired him. So when he for years later, we all came out and surprised him to retire him. Um, and uh, I can't recall my uh, piano teacher, but he was there from almost the beginning as well. Oh yeah, yeah, I know you talk about. Uh, yeah. And I, I'm, I'm, he was tall guy. Yeah, Wasn't I'm blanking. I'm, yes, I'm blanking only because you asked. But yeah. uh, but I had well, a solid education at NSA. See, see, so, you know, those things mean a lot. And it took a, a team effort to, to, to make Nashville School of the Arts, moving from Pearl, mm -hmm. to make it a school, a true school for young people to benefit and to see their dreams come true, and see things that expose them to things that will help them later on in life. So that's what the education business is all about. And that's what I've been trying to, to do all around close to almost 50 years. So, yeah. You mentioned something. You You kind of alluded to it a little bit, and I know that you are sort of the, the keeper of the legacy for the Churchwell family. Um, and you alluded to it initially that your father worked for the banner. And so, and, and I, some articles I was doing just for research was like, he was known as the Jackie Robinson of journalism, which I thought was a pretty, uh, you know, hefty title there. So could you tell me a little bit about what that experience was once you started to realize what he did and his impact um, in the community? How did that, how does that, how did that shape you and how does that shape your family? Well, you know, I'm named after him. Uh, I got the junior on the end and to see him at work uh, was a great thing uh, for me and I know for my siblings too. Uh, the challenges of being the first African-American in the South uh, during the 1950s and 60s was, was something else. Uh, this was something that had never been tried before. Uh, but he was recruited uh, by, uh, at the time, Attorney Russell Enix and uh, Mr. Gunn. Mr. Gunn at the time was over the uh, National Life Insurance Company office here in Nashville. And uh, Attorney Enix, uh, of course, was a uh, a leader in the black community. And their offices were in now the National Baptist Publishing Board, which is on the corner of uh, downtown across from the, the, the train, the uh, bus terminal, which they moved that the, the office now, but at that time that's where they were. And uh, they had, uh, Mr. Gunn had read one of dad's articles in one of the uh, uh, African-American papers at the time because the banner had, did not have any idea. Who could they get? Mm -hmm. So they called my father, and uh, at the time he was living with his mother and father in South Nashville, and daddy walked from uh, First Avenue South to the banner. I mean, not the banner, to, uh, to the publishing board. And he, he, he talked with uh, uh, Mr. Enix and Mr. Gunn. And my dad knew the banner stance. Banner, the banner was a very racist paper. They didn't like black people. They're, they're, uh, owner and publisher was not pro-black and dad knew that and he was opposed at first to doing it but I believe it was well both of them they said man you will be the Jackie Robinson of journalism you will open the door you will make it able for make it able for other young people to come behind you and to do what you have always wanted to do and, and love to do so uh with that in mind, of course, he was on the verge of marrying our mother. So he needed a job too, okay? Because that's so, <laughs> but it, this was another one of his dreams that he wanted to do. And so he took on that challenge. And uh, 
consequently, he, he, he excelled, received many, many awards, uh, was uh, the first African-American to be installed in the uh, journalism uh, uh, fraternity here in Nashville. He is also a member of the, the National Association of Black Journalists uh, Honor uh, uh, Hall of Fame that is in uh, Indianapolis. And dad, if you ever go to the African American Museum uh, in Washington, D.C., the Smithsonian, he's on the third floor of, of the African American Museum in D.C. Uh, and he has a, a kiosk there uh, that talks about his work. So, uh, but those things, and mom being a teacher too, you know, that they, I call my mother the, the architect and dad the engineer, because mom would dream it and dad would make it happen. But, you know, those, those two, strong personalities, uh, loving personalities for me, uh, and I'm, I know for the rest of my, my siblings to help motivate me to do the things I wanted to do and to be what I wanted to be. And, and with God, as I say, all things are possible. So those, those dreams, aspirations that came true for me. But the, the challenges in watching dad to do what he had to do, they wouldn't let him in the newsroom until 19... Uh, he, he was hired in 50. They didn't let him have a desk in the banner newsroom until 1955. And the only way he got in there was because of two uh, Caucasian uh, staffers who went to Mr. Stallman and protested uh, dad's treatment. They wouldn't let him come to any of that. He could even go to the staff meetings within the paper uh, on broad. So, but he, he with, with mom and prayer and mom being the cheerleader uh, and dad seeing doors started to open and God making a way out of the way, uh, he persevered and uh, we, we benefited uh, from his work. Now, one, one of the things that really helped me to understand and get my arms around it, he used to take us, Andre and I, to some of the places that he would cover. Uh, he loved, he was a graduate of Fisk and he never missed Fisk graduation. But one time at the time, the, the, the governor of Nashville, of, of, of Tennessee, rather, Buford Ellington was speaking and dad walked up to the governor. The governor knew who he was, knew who my father was. And I'm sitting there, I look at Andre, you know, we, we look up and, you know, my, my dad knows, dad knows the governor of, of, of Tennessee and he knows who he is. So dad interviewed him, talking for a few minutes there before he went to deliver his address at, at Fisk. So I kind of got an idea, you know, uh, there uh, with that and other places we went of, of the type of impact uh, dad had on not only, uh, well, impact he had in Nashville and beyond. Yeah, well, I could probably listen to you talk about um, your dad and your family for a long time because as a former member of NABJ, the National Association of Black Journalists locally, Nashville chapter, um, your father's very regarded. Um, very much so. And so we always appreciate um, the legacy that um, is still with us. And again, we talked about that a moment ago. Um, we have bestowed upon you this title of Give Black, Give Back Change Maker. What does change maker mean to you? When you, when you heard that, um, what, was, what was that feeling or what was that experience um, when you heard that word? And how do you consider yourself a change maker? would be the part two to that question. Well, to be quite honest with you, I was blown away. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I never considered myself a change maker per se. I tried to make a difference uh, whatever I could, but I guess in making a difference, you are just a change maker. So I'm honored to be asked and to be considered a change maker. Uh, you know, my, my thoughts are, uh, you know, I, I give God all the praise. I think I can't, I have to continue to thank my parents, Robert and Mary Churchwell, for the upbringing that I received. And, and I know I can speak for my siblings too, uh, but I appreciate that that title. Thank you, thank you. Yes, absolutely. How would you, how would you have described yourself, you know, what you were doing in your contribution to, you know, to your, to education and to the national community? How would you have described yourself? Well, you know, uh, um, I would describe myself as one who tried to raise the bar, okay. set the bar high, 
for the students that I work with. Uh, because I knew that they were, they were going to be great. And I would tell them that. I would tell them that you're going to be great. But these are the things you have to do to achieve greatness. Uh, two of my greatest uh, successes uh, are my two sons, uh, William Ross Churchwell and Robert Benjamin Churchwell. Uh, and I'm very proud of them. Uh, both of them are college graduates. Both of them have master's degrees in their respective areas. Uh, and William Ross is uh, in uh, technology. He has a, a BS in information systems management from TSU. And he has a master's degree from information systems management. Uh, and uh, my youngest son, Robert, uh, went to Martin Methodist College in Pulaski, where he had his BS degree in uh, psychology. And he wanted to be, a, found out later on in life, after he'd worked in the psychology area, he wanted to be a teacher. Oh. So he's teaching first grade now. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Purpose prep uh, in Metro Center. But he went back last year and got his master's degree in education. So those are my two, uh, I put them on, on top, uh, very close to my sons. And I love them dearly. And I hope they know I love them dearly. But I, I try to share that same that same idea and, and, and love to my students too, uh, that uh, you know you can be great. And when I see them in the positions that they are in now, I have ministers, I have school principals, uh, I have uh, judges, uh, Angela Blackshear Dalton. Uh, she played clarinet in my band. She's one of the judges. I said, man, wow, gee, you know. Uh, uh, Dr. Reverend Harold Love, Harold Moses Love Jr. was a drum major uh, in my band. And I taught all the loves. Uh, his oldest sister, she was the first one. Uh, and to see all what they're doing now. Uh, but Harold is, is another one. And Reverend Morris, Morris Tipton, who was a pastor of First Baptist East, East Nashville, and uh, Spurl Driver, who was also a member of my band. So I could go on and on. He, Spurl works at Vanderbilt. But when I see them and I see what they have accomplished, I, I, bust, I bust my buttons because what little bit I may have uh, contributed, and they've showed, they've expressed. So uh, to, to me personally, uh, how what I've said or what I did uh, had impacted their lives. Those are the things that, you know, really stand out to me. That's so, so awesome. you know, it's, it's a great, it's a great piece, great, that's great so thing. Awesome. That's, that's, I mean, I think that's what we all aspire to have is to be able to list those names that come that are still out doing the work. Um, the foundation that you have shared with them, uh, giving you quotes back to you, things you may have even forgotten that you said. I think that that's yeah. acceptable <laughs> to, to, um, to have that. Um, I have like, one last question and then Lisa may have one before we wrap up. Um, talk to us about the fund that you have at the Community Foundation. We don't want to overlook that. That is a huge part of what we do with Give Black, Give Back. And we want to bring uh, attention to that fund and let people know more about it. Yeah, it's the Robert and Mary Churchwell Scholarship Fund. Uh, it is for those young people who want to become journalists uh, and major in English. Uh, so that is uh, the uh, scholarship. My brother, uh, Kevin, and his wife, Gloria, set it up first. And of course, we've supported as a family, uh, financially and otherwise. And so I know that uh, the, the uh, Community Foundation has a, awarded several of the young people's scholarships from that fund. So that's, that's just fantastic. So uh, I would encourage uh, those who will see this, if they wanted to donate and make a contribution, please do so because it is for a worthy cause. and It will help the young people, again, a young person uh, to achieve the dreams that they have for themselves. Absolutely. Thank you. That's pretty cool. So I know that you, I mean, as I was reading your bio, you have so many accolades and you're still continuing to be very, um, you know, active in the community. So we always want to give you a chance to share what you're currently doing. That we, we can support you have, like you supported us in the community so much. So what is, what are you up to now? What's next for you? And, and there you go. Well, that's, that was very nice of you. So thank you. Uh, well, I'm currently, uh, as he said in The Godfather, 
uh, when I retired from Metro schools, uh, I was called back in. You know, it's a scene where Michael says, uh, I thought I was loose, but it brought me back in. So I've, I've been working uh, at Robert Churchwell uh, Magna Elementary School for 10 years now. Uh, I'm currently serving as the community outreach coordinator there, uh, trying to bring resources from our community uh, and also from our churches uh, and other uh, uh, organizations of education to church well. And so I work, I work along with our, uh, we have a great community achieves person there, uh, it's Tiffany Rhodes, who does a fantastic job uh, with helping to get resources too. But my job is to help bring resources in and help with any projects, special projects, that the school may have. Uh, we would, we're still, literacy is very important. Our kids need to learn to read. And many years ago, we did a program where uh, one of our teachers wanted to have uh, one of the kids to read to teddy bears. Great idea. Because some kids are intimidated about reading out loud. You know, mm -hmm. if you sit there in your classroom and you read your favorite book about a teddy bear, and you know you don't have that intimidation. The teddy bear will listen to you. He won't. He won't shake his head. He won't say ah. No. And so uh, I uh, work with several uh, individuals in Nashville, and we were able to purchase teddy bears for uh, two, three classes, and we we did it for three years. And it did prove. And the kids, the great thing about it, the kids got to take the teddy bears home uh, after they read uh, uh, during the school year. So I'm working there. Uh, I'm also involved with Boy Scouts of America. I serve as the district commissioner for Boy Scouts. Uh, uh, I, I credit Harold Love, uh, Reverend Love again for that. He got me involved with that. But I was a, a troop master, a scout master, uh, the greatest, the greatest uh, scout troop in the United States of America, Troop 28. And out of that, uh, out of my troop, I uh, had three Eagle Scouts. Uh, both of my sons and one other young man who I'm very, very proud of, Roderick McDaniel, who is an entrepreneur, and Roderick has his own business in uh, Springfield, Tennessee, S3 uh, Management Company. Uh, he's doing a fantastic job there. So uh, they, they were involved with, my son William was involved with the uh, report to the president in the ninth grade. He got to fly to DC and with only eight, he was showed one of eight kids Went to D.C. and met at the time uh, uh, the president. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think which one, what president, what president was it? Uh, anyway, that uh, he went to to visit with him well, along with the other seven kids. Uh, so that was quite an honor. But those are the things. And I'm also uh, working. I'm on the board of uh, Tennessee, uh, the Tennessee Credit Union. I serve on the uh, the board for that organization long-standing organization in Nashville. And uh, uh, I enjoy working with the, the, the people there too. So those that's what I mean. Of course, I'm still involved in church. Uh, we have our own 5013C and, and the Community Foundation is, is trying to help us too, to restore the first president of Meharry Hospital's home, uh, which is one time served as the parsonage for our church. So we're trying to restore that to make it a place of help for the South National uh, area, uh, Trimble Bottom, if you're familiar with Trimble Bottom, for the Trimble Bottom area, and also J.C. Napier and Tony Sulcom uh, area uh, in, in the South National, we're trying to restore the house so we can provide services, not only for them, but for that whole area there. So that's, uh, and I'm the president of, of that, uh, that organization. So that's what I'm doing. Just a little yeah. bit tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I have a grandson too. Oh, so that's okay. the most, I mean, that's that's because you have to lead with that. You let you you uh you have to lead with that. That's the most important part, right? It's not like you're taking him to all these places so he can be involved in the legacy of, of the Churchwell family and, and how you guys have given back. So you've already started to do two generations beyond you to sort of give back in a way um, that is very demonstrative. So very similar to like your father did where you were able to go and kind of see what he was doing so he could see, what, what do you call, what's your, what is your name? Is it grandpa? Is it papa? Well, who are you? Well, you know, you got all those different names, but I, I, I uh, chose the most easy and the standard. 
granddaddy. 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 <laughs> well, I have to ask you, I, I, I was, I was we're going to wrap up and I know we have to get out of here, but what is it like driving up to a school that has your name and your father's name on it? What is that? Because I, I need to hear that answer. You know, that's a great question. Uh, it, it's tremendous. Mm. It's tremendous. Uh, when I do drive up and I see that name, it, it, it brings me back to my dad, of course. Uh, there We have a picture of him in the lobby. When you walk in, it's a picture of him. And he smiles at me every day. I'm there. So, you know, uh, but it, it, it's really, really a, a, a great tribute to him and also to our family. But it's, it's fantastic. And, and I'm quite honored. Quite honored uh, that I share the name of a great man, uh, a my hero, uh, and I get to see his name and see him in the hallways uh, the days that I'm there. So I, I, it's 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 fantastic. I appreciate that question. Thank you. Thank yes, you. absolutely. Well, thank you for being here as our change maker. Um, we are so honored to know you and to be in the number with you. Um, to learn more about the scholarship fund, we invite people to go to our website, blackgivingback.com. You can donate there. You can also donate directly to Give Black, Give Back, and we will donate on your behalf. If you don't can't find it or somehow you get lost, we will take care of it for you. Thank you so much, Mr. Churchwell, for being here and being our change maker. I'm honored. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate you. I appreciate you. Until next I time, thank you all.